Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Here's what's brand new in November 1982. Give up my Atari? My television? No I'll way. For this. You bet your asteroids. <laughs> Introducing a revolutionary Vectrex arcade system. No TV oh set man, need. look at Instead, that. Instead, Vectrex has a real arcade screen built in. So wow. you get challenging real arcade graphics and sound there's with the every four button controller. Cartridge. Man, no wonder I mean, they're showing off so many games. One over Atari and in television for real arcade gameplay. So compare. <laughs> Discover how Vectrex <laughs> brings real arcade play home. Oh, yeah, gotta love it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the launch of the one, the only, the Vectrex. Developed by Western Technologies and Smith Engineering. It was originally uh, manufactured by General Consumer Electronics, or GCE. So you might hear me say the GCE Vect Vectrex, but later in 1983, it was taken over by Milton Bradley, kind of similar to the Astrocade and Videocade, you know, another company took over. If we open it up and you want to look at all the innards, the CPU is a Motorola 668A09 running at 1.5 megahertz. It's got one kilobyte of RAM, and its sound is the General Instrument AY38912. This has a 9-inch CRT included. It is the first console to say, hey, we got a screen that's included with the system. I know we saw the Intex Adventure Vision, but this is an actual CRT television. A smaller one, but still gets the job done. Uh, it does have two ports for joystick controls, and the joysticks are analog joysticks. Very rare right now. The only other system that we have uh, that we know that's a home console is the Atari 5200 that does analog joysticks. This is also the first and only vector displayed video game console ever. Before this, we've played 28 games with vector graphics, and all 28 of those games has been only in the arcade. So right now, you're going to experience vector graphics at home. <laughs> this, this system takes ROM carts, and it is the first console to have any 3D-based peripheral. That's right, this console is going to have 3D glasses that you can use. <laughs> it's one of the most rare peripherals across any system. It also has a light pin that you can use to draw on the CRT. In November 1982, this released as at $199 in the United States, or pretty much 200 bucks, which is it's pretty steep. It's going to be released later in Europe, and then when it's released in Japan, it'll be done by Bandai, very similar to the Intellivision in Japan. Bandai did that one as well. And I got to tell you, right now, the homebrew scene of the Vectrex is thriving. So while we're going to be seeing all the re regular releases, check out the Vectrex right now because there's games being made for it right now. The very first game that we're going to play on the Vectrex is Mindstorm. This is the game that came included with the Vectrex. So it's built in, and this is the 14th built-in video game that we've played on the show as far as the number of games that were built into the system. 14 games already out there. So here's Mindstorm. They've reconstructed a box for us, so this is not legit. There, there is no real box. It doesn't exist. They did release a, uh, a later version of Mindstorm because this is going to fix a few bug bugs, and we might even see a bug here on the show as we play the game. We're going to play the, the original that was built into the system. So really fun, quaint little made-up box that doesn't exist. If you boot, on the, boot up the system with no cartridge plugged in, this is what plays, the very first thing you see. Yeah, there we go. So besides the box, there it is, the Vectrex. There's the analog joystick. It's a really tiny analog joystick, but the four buttons are laid out, and it makes you feel almost like you're playing in the arcade. Very well done. Both controllers can plug in, so you can play a one- or two-player game if you want to. I know, right? This is mind-blowing. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so underrated, and... Uh, right now, if you told me I could get the Vetrex and play it right now, I would play that over many of the systems we're playing on the show. So if it really was November 1982, this is the system that would be rivaling all the rest. Here's the cartridge, <laughs> made-up cartridge for Mindstorm. Doesn't exist. It's, it's the one that's made in the system. Every single one of the games on the Vectrex has an overlay that you put over the top of the screen, which changes up the color of the, 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 the vector graphics. So this is the overlay that you see for Mindstorm. Nice. <laughs> and we do have a manual or the instructions. This came included with the system. How do we play some Mindstorm? 
another video game that was included with the the system. We've seen this all the way back from the from the very beginning of consoles. The Fairchild Channel F had included hockey and tennis inside. The RCA Studio 2 had addition, doodle, bowling, freeway, and patterns. The Astrocade had checkmate, gunfight, scribbling, and the calculator. And this, I would argue, is the best built-in game. So the, the, the system, when you first buy it with no cartridge, I'm going to say this is the best built-in game that we've played so far. Tread lightly. The transport lanes of intergalactic space have been seeded with mines from an alien vessel. Use your mine-destroying blaster to blow up the mines before they annihilate you. You can survive floating mines, but beware of the fireball, magnetic, and treacherous fireball magnetic mines. They just blend them all together. 13 fields, each one more difficult, await you. Oh, no way. Yes, and it, yeah, that's true. If it, the cart port is broken, all you can play is this. You can only play Mindstorm. There's the screen overlay we're going to put over the top, and the manual explains how it works. You plug the controller in, you power it on, and uh, look how simple this is. We, we've already seen manuals explain how to set up your system. You know, in television and the, the Atari, look how easy this is. <laughs> the Vectrex couldn't be simpler. And it even has a handy, uh, like a handle on the top, as if it's meant to be portable, because you, you just carry around a 9-inch CRT. It's awesome. Oh, yes, Marshall, it is. It's an advanced Asteroids Deluxe. So it explains right there. The steps to power it on. Mind, mind storm controls are pretty simple. We got an escape or the warp if you're playing asteroids. Thrust moves your ship forward and fires your rocket, and then we can rotate our ship. Very similar to controls as asteroids. Player selection. This is a one or two player game, but it is alternate play, like if you're going to play a hot seat in the arcade. And then explains the gameplay. You're going to have several different mines that show up, and they blow up sometimes going into smaller pieces, but not quite like asteroids. It is different enough to not be ripped off or uh, get a lawsuit by Atari. Oh, that's true. Yes. We're going to see when we get into that, Curtis, as well. Here's the types of mines. We've got floating mines. we got fireball mines. The magnetic mines, dangerous. And then the magnetic fireball mines. They have different sizes, too. Small, medium, and large. And they have 13 different field sizes or levels that we'll go through. All are still behind that overlay. We start with five ships or five lives. And here's the score table. Memorize it. Know it. Because it's 1982. we got to go for the high score. And you get 110 points earned for hitting the fireball itself and 1,000 points for hitting the mine layer. You can restart the game at any time, pressing the reset button on the console, and they even include in the manual a score record. So cool. I love checking out the manual because if it was November 1982 and I did buy this brand new, this is what I would want to do. I would want to see the manual. So cool. And then here we go. You can order some more. Yes. Oh, replacement overlays in case <laughs> in case they wear out. Yeah, I'm sure that happened too. Awesome. So this came in lots of versions. I mentioned the home brew scene. There's lots of hacks, reboots, and there's even a, a, a 1998 version and a version two of Mindstorm. This is the original, the one inside the system. Let's play some Mindstorm. This is done by John Hall, GCE, at the beginning of November or whenever you bought the console, 1982. Way to go, John. John helped out with some of the development of Towering Inferno that we saw on the Atari 2600. And here's Mindstorm. Nice. Watch how this begins. Now, you can pick between player one and player two. I'm going to play player one and then go in. Look at that. 3D wireframe graphics, vector-based graphics. It's amazing. So we can move the ship left and right. We should have a... Th uh, okay, there's our warp, thrust, and fire. And that's the three keys. The fourth key does nothing. Fourth key's how you call for help, and no one answers in the Mindstorm. I keep pushing, nothing happens. Oh yeah, very reminiscent of Asteroids. They even give us that, that little bit of inertia or gravity. Oh man, yeah, this is so so amazing. So I already enjoyed Asteroids when we saw it in the arcades and Asteroids Deluxe. And then, I mean, we've already seen plenty of games that, that, that were like Asteroids. This right here, the graphics, the wireframe are really nice. Of all the games we played up to this point, to display it like a ship flying at you like that, the 3D wireframe, is, is, is really rare. Oh, there it is. That's the glitch. Now, does anyone have the original Vectrex with the first version that's built in? And have you experienced this? Because, oh, <laughs> and right whenever it comes back, then the mind gets us. Of course. Yeah, I love... Um, it, it, obviously, I'm doing my best to show what this could look like, but y you're not doing yourself the, the justice unless you can get a chance to play this on the, the system itself. I said that with the arcade games, too. The vector-based arcade games. Yep, there it is. Gosh. 
Maybe we should switch to um, an updated one. But I don't think it would... Hopefully it didn't happen as much where the bug came up while you're playing the game. Man, yeah, I love the explosions. It feels even more action-packed than Asteroids. At least the original, the first one. And the overlay assist is interesting because all the vector-based graphics are only coming in one color. There is color vector-based graphics in the arcades right now. But to fix that, that's where they have the overlay. And at this point, here on the show, we played 38 games that are handhelds that are overlay assisted. They, they, they put an overlay over the top of graphics. And then we played 25 games that were on the Magnavox Odyssey. The, the old Magnavox Odyssey, you know, from 1972. So now to play a, a video game console with overlays is is like a throwback to 1972. There's nothing else we played that you needed to have or came with an overlay. Plenty of games that we played that had uh, an, over, an overlay over the uh, number pad of the controller, plenty on the on the Intellivision. Oh yes, and the the rectangle controller. That's a good point. Sound is all coming from the system too. So you, it's, it's like a self-contained console. You don't need anything extra. And this is, I, I can't stress enough too, if you had a, a, a house that only had one television and you wanted to play your games, when someone wanted to use the television, the, the, the sports games on, news is on, you couldn't play your, your, your video games anymore. But here on the Vectrex, you have it all contained in one. That's right, mom. There's no, it, there's no reason why I can't play my games. I'm sure you can make it plenty of reasons. Yeah, this is this is like a must-have system for me. It's so fun. Later in 1983, we'll play Mindstorm 2. That'll be the bug-fixed version. And um, this obviously looks very similar to Asteroids. I mean, uh, I'm not surprised if Atari wanted to rip, rip them off or sue them for this. We refer to these as multi-directional shooters here on the show. This is the 125th multi-directional shooter, like the genre. As far as Asteroid games go, across all systems, this is the 46th game we've played that's an Asteroid variant. That's how many are out there. I'm still loving Asteroids, by the way. After playing all those games, I'm still playing Minefield, loving the Asteroid-style gameplay. Man, the bug is coming up again. <laughs> oh, really, Chiptune? Well, if, we, if it is, I either didn't put it on or we haven't installed it, or, or we haven't seen that game yet. And at this point, there are official asteroids. There's five games that are out there. The official on the 20, uh, Atari 2600, the official on the Atari home computer, and the the series of asteroid games in the arcades. Asteroid Deluxe. Oh, get it. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Love it, Chiptune. I don't, I don't believe you anymore because sometimes you're going to the future and I just pretend, uh, he's, he's just making stuff up. So I'll just keep pretending you're making stuff up. All right, so they're starting to incorporate more of the, yep, smarter minds mining, homing in on us. Now, since we rate these games across all home consoles, Mindstorm was built in. I still say it's the best built-in video game you could play. But I'd be hard-pressed to call all the games on the Vectrex five stars just because they're so good. And there's nothing else like it out there. It's, it's really not fair to compare this to the other home consoles. This is even better than what you would be playing on home computers. It's, I would say, ahead of its time. And it's just sad because the legacy of the Vectrex was because of the downfall of the video game crash. Right now, though, they're on top. They just, you know, getting thrown in, in, in the fray with all the other consoles and all the other games that are coming out. And have even more... Coming up soon. Yes, yeah, that's right. The only one. All right, so there you go. Uh, a taste of Mindstorm. It is so good. Even with a bug, I would still be uh, having a blast playing this. I mean, yeah, I know over there they're, they're giving up their Atari and Intellivision, and I understand. I would want to do that as well. So for all the games you could play across all home consoles right now, in November 1982, it's one of the best. This uh, Mindstorm is one of the best. Uh, I almost say five stars, but I'll say because of the bug in this first version and how they correct it, I'm going to say uh, four and a half stars. Looking over in the chat, I see three and a half to four. 
Gameplay is a uh, one player only experience, but if you love Asteroids and you want to play something that's, that, that feels authentic to the arcade, this is the way to go. I see another four and a half. Yeah, it does have more variety. Yeah, and I say the bug uh, knocks it down as well. Chiptune's doing four, so lots of high from the chat. I see a three and a half of all the games you could play, and this is right now in November 1982. Hi, Marks. But that's not all you could get on the Vectrex right now. Let's see what's next. That's right. Also, besides the built-in game, let's buy some more for the Vectrex. You can also get Armor Attack. Let's check it out. The Armor Attack. Here's the box for Armor Attack. A, a real box, not a fabricated one. We saw Armor Attack in 1980. This was done originally by Tim Skelly of Cinematronics. And I cannot confirm if Tim did this port. So it, it might have been Tim that did this because Cinematronics did provide the port, but I'm not sure if it was Tim. The original arcade um, the developer, though, did a great job. And you can see on the front, Vectrex is not afraid to market their, their games with the screenshot. They're, they're showing what the game looks like. They're even showing a little bit of a, a glow aesthetic. Pretty cool. You flip it over in the back. All the thrills of the real arcade version. Oh, I can't, couldn't agree more. Maneuver your Jeep through the streets and alleys of an occupied town. Hide from the enemy tanks behind buildings. Launch your own surprise attack. All this. No place is safe from this treacherous enemy. So cool. And it does boast a whole array of Vectrex games cartridges are available. Space, adventure, sports. They're all here. Well, not all in the in the beginning. What other armor do we have for armor attack? This is the very first time and only time you could get the, the arcade game armor attack at home. So another um, a, a novelty uh, to be able to play it this way. I got some reconstructed boxes there. And then there it is, the, the Vectrex joystick i know it's it's such a tiny joystick it feels more like a, a controller a gamepad with the rect rectangular design there's the cart will pop in for armor attack no mindstorm now and we also have uh, versions in other countries as well and there's our overlay they're going to make our vectrex burn green here's the manual for armor attack let's do this <laughs> see yeah it could also go by armor dot 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 attack or dot dot attack. Maneuver your jeep through the streets and alleys of an occupied town. Hide from the enemy tanks behind buildings. Improve your chance of survival by playing with an ally. Oh, that's right. But beware of the deadly helicopter flying overhead. No place is safe from this treacherous enemy. There's no lore with any of the Vectrex games yet. <laughs> They're not doing what Atari does. So there's the setup. Put the overlay on. Power on your Vectrex console. Plug in the cartridge. So easy. Love it. The controls are kind of similar to, well, they're, they're identical to the controls of Armor Attack in the arcade. Left rotation, right rotation on the joystick. And then we got uh, four, the four different buttons are going to be giving you slight nudges of your rotation. And then you have the thrust and fire. So this one us utilizes all four of the buttons. Player selection is great because this is two-player cooperative play. And I mean cooperative in, as, as in you can't hurt the other person. You are teaming up to, and work, working together. You do have a separate score. Of course, everyone's going to compete over the score. But the cooperative play allows you to work together at the same time. So cool. So game number one also lets you show if the buildings are going to be drawn on the screen, giving you a clear picture of obstacles. Or you better have that overlay up because the game number two, the uh, or uh, game number three, the buildings are not drawn in. And so you have to know where the walls are. Uh, for your tank and then it explains how to start the game there's the objects we'll find ah with the vector graphics we'll be represented by the jeeps the tank helicopter and then our missiles your jeeps can appear in the middle of a bombed out city inhabited by your enemies and if two players depend the city both jeeps will appear you use both joysticks and you get to play at the same time your missiles destroy helicopters too and they say again there's no place to hide from this treacherous enemy <laughs> And this was brought to us by Cinematronics. It's the 14th game we've seen here on the show by Cinematronics. And this is the very first time Cinematronics came home. Can't stress that enough. It breaks down the scores over here right above my head. How to restart the game. And then like they did in the, in the other manual, how you can write your scores down. You got to prove to everybody that you've got all the scores. And then if you want to order overlays, you can. I know it's awesome. This one has lots of versions too. They have some spinner hacks here. And then controlled versions. Uh, the homebrew scene for this is great. You can even get hacks where they changed up armor attack. It's, it's so cool. Here's the first one. Armor attack. Brought to us by Cinematronics and GCE in the beginning of November 1982. Yes. Later this is going to be brought to us by Milton Bradley whenever they take over. 
Uh, Milton Bradley at this point has only done the Microvision handheld, and they've only done games on the TI-99 4A home computer. So this is Milton Bradley's first home console that uh, they, 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 they worked on. All right, so we go right in the game. I'm gonna start with a one player uh, game. You can see I'm maneuvering around as a Jeep and I'd be hard pressed to say, what's the difference? I <laughs> just crashed into the tank. You play at the Jeep moving around, so you got a little more maneuverability and it doesn't feel as stilted as like tank controls with other games. But the, the missile sound effects controls are great. And you even have this little, you can see I can use the other buttons to barely nudge my Jeep around. Just make small, small controls. Take them out. Oh man, they got me at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And the o good point, Marshall, all, all the overlays tell you what the controls are as a reminder. And don't worry if you've you know lost the overlay, then you can order another one from GCE as long as they're around. Take two hits to take out the tanks. Where would the helicopter go? Come here, buddy. Oh man, so fast. Wow. Yeah, you gotta be quick. I gotta get in arcade mode. This marks the 54th game we play that's a vehicular combat game. Or essentially a, a game where you're not playing as a humanoid. You're playing as a jeep or a tank or, or some kind of craft that's running around shooting things rather than just a normal sh a shooter. There we go. Let's get him. Nope. Gotta keep moving. Yeah, there we go. This is awesome. And while I don't have a, a friend to play with two-player, this is a great two-player game. Plays so close to the arcade. And the analog joystick gives you a little bit of fine-tuned controls with some of these games too. So it's, it's excellent. There is nothing like this. Is it just gonna go right through? Yeah. If you do play with two people, your shot just goes right through them and your, your Jeep just goes right through them. So you don't affect the other person's play. You, you, you can't sabotage. As I'm sure plenty of people did. You know when you play a two-player game, if you're, if you're on the screen at the same time, you can do things to mess each other up. You can't do it in this one. <laughs> Possibly Paul. <laughs> Here on home consoles, it's like there's a law. You have to have a video game that's a top-down driving shooting game or vehicular combat game. We saw it back in on the Fairchild Channel F with Desert Fox. They, they had one, and then the Atari had the amazing combat. And then after uh, combat, we had Panzer Attack on the Valley Astrocade. They did that. Armored Encounter was on the Odyssey 2. And then Tank Battle was on the Interton VC 4000. And then on the Intellivision, they did Armor Battle, which eventually came over to the Atari as Armor Ambush. And then they had Tank Attack on the Creative Vision. And Tanks a Lot on the Arcadia 2001. So everyone has to have their vehicular combat game. And this is the, ve the Vectrex's vehicular combat game. It's, it's awesome. So good. And this even plays, I say it's smoother because um, the, yeah, the, the way that I'm able to drive and move the Jeep around, it feels like I have more control over it. Oh yeah. Do yourself a favor, go to a video game museum, get your hands on the Vectrex, play some of these yourself so you can see the experience. I'm doing a little bit, but it's it's better to do it yourself. Yeah, it's it's very, very good. And it's amazing that this is the only time you can play this game at, at home. And this is identical. This is like arcade perfect. Done in vector graphics. If I wanted to make a gripe, I'd say the only downside is there's just not a lot of enemy types. You know, you could have more than this that are out there. Oh, that's right. There's also one more. There's Panzerschlacht on the SHG Blackpoint. They had another vehicular combat game. So I tell you what, you tell me a home console, I'll be able to tell you if they have a, a, a top-down vehicular combat game. <laughs> All right, well done. There's a taste of armor attack. Play with two people, it's even better. Of all the games you could be playing right now across all home consoles, Vectrex is again, it's one of the best. I'm even gonna go all the way up. I'll look in the chat and if you wanna give me something lower, but as the only place you can get this, no one can get this except in the arcade. 
If you had armor attack, you'd be able to experience this. And right now, that's the only way you could experience it. It's, it's amazing. I'm looking over with lots of fours. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to go higher. I'm going to say five. Armor attack is the top tier for video games on a console right now in November 1982. That's true. It is an older arcade game. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Runs really well as, as well. All right. Now, that, that's not all. We got one more release on the Vectrex that you could get at launch. Here we go. Next up is Berserk. Yes. Originally brought to us in the arcades in November 1980 by Alan McNeil. Let's check out Berserk on the Vectrex. Here's the box. They just give us the overlay and the, the, the what the game's like. Really, really simple and bold. It, they're not giving us flashy artwork like Atari and television, Magnavox Odyssey, what have you. If you flip it over in the back, it's all the excitement of the real arcade version. Maneuver the humanoid through the electrified mazes of robot-filled rooms. Kill off the first group of robots. Yes, and it is. Evil Otto's going to show up. He can jump the maze walls and squash if you linger too long. Yes, we're very familiar with how Berserk works. <laughs> Here's the other artwork we have for Berserk. Yes, can you believe that? There's a Vectrex version of Berserk. Because it was not... Uh, by the way, the first two games you know we played so far, first was based on Asteroids, which was vector-based. Second was Armor Attack, vector-based in the arcade. This, though, this was raster in the arcade. So this one is a whole new experience. Let's see if we got a shiny new box. We do not. There's our lovely Vectrex. There's the cartridge. You just pop in, turn it on, and go. Play the game. No waiting for cassettes. No waiting for loading. Just get the game going. There's the overlay for Berserk. And we'll see it when we get, in, get into it. Let's see what the manual's like for Berserk. 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 This was official on the Atari 2600 in August 1982. Brought to us by Dan Hitchens. And I have no idea who did the, Berserk, the Vectrex version. Come forth, developer. Who developed this on the Vectrex? I'd love to know. This is um, brought to us by Stern Electronics, so I don't know if Alan McNeil had anything to do with this one. This is the 20th game we've played by Stern Electronics here on the show, and uh, they haven't done anything for home consoles except they did Astro Invader on the Arcadia 2001, and then they did you know helped with Berserk on the Atari home uh, the Atari 2600. But this is the, the the 20th game that Stern Electronics has done. Yes, we know about. Oh, look at Evil Auto. He looks even more evil up there. Here's our setup on the Vectrex. Get the overlay and get going. Oh, yeah, Defender would be awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, James. We'll see that one, too. And, and you're mentioning the ones that we'll see later. In the future. Berserk's designed to be played with built-in control panel. And the functions are... <laughs> I love this. We'll actually see it on the overlay. Every button says fire. You just move and fire. That's all you need to play Berserk. Once you start the game, it has um, two player. If you play a two player game, you're going to take turns. You don't get to play at the same time. So, no simultaneous multiplayer. There's us as the humanoid, the robots, and Evil Auto. We enter the electrified maze. Don't touch the walls like we've seen with Berserk. Run through the maze in all eight directions. Shoot in all eight directions. You can escape the maze at any time, running through one of the indicated exits. And I want to hear if we hear the robots taunt us. Are we going to get yelled at by the robots? Evil Auto can show up and appear and destroy you and crush you by jumping on you. If you're hit by any of them, you're through. At first, it'll be easy to shoot robots because they don't fire bullets at you. But as you get higher, the robots get meaner. Yes, it's Berserk. If you, imagine if this was the first Berserk you ever played. Here on the show, we played lots of Berserk. We know how it works. We have to have a few, few, few versions like the bug fix prototype version. And different ones. Here is the first. Let's pop in Berserk and play Stern Electronics and GCE later by Milton Bradley. But here in November 1982, it's Berserk time. <laughs> that would be our first ditty or music. Uh, I don't know if you count uh, tapping the drums with armor attack as, as music. That actually counts as music. All right, so I'm going to play it as a one-player game. You can see I'm moving around. Oh, man. The sound effects are awesome. This is the very first time. Oh, move. Get him. Evil Auto's coming. Whoa, that was close. Evil Auto doesn't waste time. He knows we've played Berserk before. <laughs> you need to get going. Oh, nice. And the robots touch the walls, they die too. 
But there is no yelling or taunting, so robots aren't yelling anything at us. Chicken, fight like a robot. Maybe you can taunt me in the chat and it'll make me feel like I'm playing Berserk in the arcade. But this is whole, all new. Uh, you wouldn't be able to play Berserk this way, or at least with these uh, th these style of graphics. I'm a big fan of vector-based graphics. I'm already gushing. It's awesome. Now, as far as all the games we played at this point, we call these a multi-directional shooter too, but also a run and gun, and you're running around shooting everything. This is the 20th video game we played that's a run and gun style game, at least from the top-down view like this. Oh, dodge it, missed it. Man, the sound effects are great. This feels like I'm playing an arcade game, and I've been in the arcade in 1982. It's, it's fantastic. This is the 23rd game we played that is a Berserk-style game. So it, it, this plays... we played plenty of games that are really close to Berserk. I really hope Evil Auto isn't coming from this side. But because of the color, the Vectrex can only display one color, we don't get color-coded robots, so you really don't have this uh, color scheme. You know, whenever you, 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 you increase levels, the r robots change color, so you can tell you're, you're progressing. But uh, gameplay-wise, feels good. Uh-oh, go. I don't think I'm going to make it. Wow, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, yes, Frogger? Yes, I have. Oh, I'm, I mean, uh, Chip Tune, I'll pretend I have it. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of Frogger, so yeah, I've, I've checked that one out. It's, it's, it's yeah, excellent. Yeah, it doesn't have this many game modes. Um, th this one doesn't offer... It, it still offers alternate play, but yeah, it doesn't offer... Uh, it, multiple game modes is the other one, but you're, you're honestly going by just the experience of being in the arcade or seeing this as a, a, a displayed a new way. That's that's really the biggest draw that uh, Berserk has. When we played this in the arcades, of all the arcade games we played to this point, I said four stars for Berserk. Uh-oh, there's the flicker. They're pushing the limits of the Vectrix already. Just leave the shot. You'll be all right. Let's see if we can... Oh, he's not... He's not dumb. I thought he'd walk into the wall. Come on. There we go. He is dumb. That's great. All right, so of all the games you can play right now across all home consoles, Berserk is only officially on the Atari uh, v uh, VCS, but there's, there's plenty of other games that play like Berserk that are out there. But we're spoiled and we play everything. Not everyone was gonna play everything right now. This still would be a treat. It's great. This is excellent. I love everything about the I love the aesthetic, I love the overlay. I just like vector graphics, so I'm I'm hard pressed for that one. But um, uh, this one I could easily see myself going four stars. It's it's a very good game. It's excellent, but I wouldn't say one of like the the best you could play across all uh, home consoles. So looking over the chat, I see some more four stars. Yeah, right. It does seem like this version, they were just walking into the walls. They were committing suicide all over the place. I see a three and a half, four star. Yeah, excellent version. Oh, a four and a half. It, it, it's true. If you love Berserk, then you would definitely be rating this one higher. But I'll go four of all the games you could play across all home consoles. It's excellent, but I wouldn't say one of the best like, of all the games you could play. The other two, the first two, though, yes, I, I would say. All right, so there you go. I'm so glad I was able to bring the release of the Vectrex, GCE Vectrex. That's all the time we have for this episode of Chronologically Gaming. Be sure to tune in next time. We're going to play an upgraded Jeff Minter Defender clone, a downgraded breakout variant, and another lost video game from Canada. That's it for today, and like I always say, are we really going to play every video game? You bet your asteroids. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.